Hello everyone. Come on friends, join in. This will be my first Instagram live. I'm pretty excited about this uh, option to reach out to all of you young people out there to discuss homeopathy, to discuss organin. Thank you, Kyur. We still have got a couple of minutes. Let's all the friends join in and then we discuss our questions and answers. Keep your questions ready. This is going to be a question answer session primarily. So whatever you want to discuss about homeopathy. Thank you, uh, Drupat. I hope you will gain a lot from the books. Consider these sessions that we'll be doing on Insta Live just as an extension to my books. Uh, it's a, it's a good way, but we are not just we can discuss anything about homeopathy. It's not just related to uh, uh, organ per se, but if you want to discuss anything about your uh, career choices, your education, uh, anything general about homeopathy, any other subject related to homeopathy, uh, feel free to ask your questions. If I'm uh, comfortable answering them, I'll sure uh, share my own opinion about whatever your uh, concerns are, whatever your problems are. If somebody wants to pop in, um, in in video to ask the question, just send me the request and I'll accept that request. But we'll wait for a couple of minutes. Those minutes can be used uh, by having a good cup of morning tea. Let's begin uh, our discussion with the first question uh, that comes to my mind with this tea. Uh, but I'll dis start discussing this in a couple of minutes. Uh, how many of you think that we should avoid tea and coffee uh, when you are uh, taking homeopathic medicines? And I, I ask the question why I drink tea with impunity. Okay, I see Vamsi is here. Vamsi, I'll be answering your question also. You posted a, a while ago about whether you should be doing MD or not. I'll accept your request to be in the live video just a moment. Just excuse me if I bungle up something during this Insta Live because this is my first Insta Live. I haven't done this before. 
so if something goes awry just let me know about it all right so ku shall we begin Okay, so let's take the first request. Somebody has requested to be in the video. Let's see. Hello, the MT chair wants to ask something. Hello. Hello. Yes. So tell me who you are and what is your question today? My name is Dr. Jyoti, sir. Hi, Dr. Jyoti. Um, hello, sir. Uh, my question is regarding uh, like LM potency. I wanted to know something about LM potency and how uh, like how doctors will be selecting uh, potencies like uh, uh, there will be sequence of potencies in lm actually zero by one and uh, up to 32 i think there are medicines yes. so how do they uh, go through it and why don't they select uh, like if they, uh, they are not finding sufficient zero by one is not uh, helping them why don't they uh, jump to uh, cm potencies why they okay. go into the sequence and how and why they do that i wanted to know that all right so postology is a very very complex uh, area and uh, it it the question the depth of the question that you ask uh, the breadth of the question that you ask it needs a full day for me to explain you all of it but i'll tell you in brief okay now first let's not just confuse the cm scale with the lm scale the C scale and the LM scale, they are totally different. So it's uh, saying that, okay, the LM has not worked. So let's jump to C, CM. You said CM, not C potency. Mm -hmm. Now, CM, CM, is potency. One of, yeah, CM is one of the highest potencies the highest potency. uh, yes. uh, that is available these days. It was not the highest that was available during earlier times. There were potencies mm -hmm. much beyond CM. Uh, mm -hmm. If you actually read Kent lectures or Kent's lesser writings, uh, you will you will uh, read pot potencies like DM, DMM, MMM, such potencies yes, were sir, also, yes, uh, yes, so these potencies were also available during the time of Kent and Lepe, but unfortunately we don't have them now. Uh, the highest we have available is CM, but uh, your question was related to LM potency. So how do you select LM potency? Now to select LM potency, you need to understand why Hahnemann gave, developed this scheme. That was the question. That, that is something that needs to be understood. Now, what has Hahnemann written about potency is that the succussion is important. As well as dilution is important. Okay, two, two parts of potency. Succussion is important, dilution is important. Uh, can you mute yourself? There is background noise. Okay, so Hahnemann said that the two things are important. Succussion is important and dilution is important. How important succussion was for him that Hahnemann has written in his lesser writings that doctors who carry the liquid medicines uh, in their carriage from one town to another, they end up getting a different potency by the time they reach the other town. So succussion was important for Hahnemann. Dilution, you can hear me? Yes, sir. I'm okay. Ready. So... Uh, and the dilution was important also because first thing Hahnemann did was develop centesimal scale. That was till fourth edition of organon. He was using dry pills of the centesimal scale. 
Then in the fifth edition of Organ of Medicine and in the chronic diseases, he moved from the dry pills to a liquid solution of the centesimal scale. And how did he do? Because what he was seeing here is that when he gave C scale, C potencies to many patients, there was a homeopathic aggravation or strong homeopathic aggravation which he wanted to avoid. So the idea came to him that let's dilute this further. Rather than using up higher or lower potency, let's try to dilute this and see how it works. So the next effort was that he started diluting. He, he would take one or two pills of medicated globules of any potency, say sulfur 30, and he'll dissolve that in a tumbler of water. And from that tumbler of water, he would give repeated doses to the patient. So this was the centesimal potency liquid solution uh, introduced in the fifth edition of organon and also in the chronic diseases. Now, when he was using these, he felt that the cure can be more gentle. The aggravation can be further avoided. So to make this possible, there are two things he could do. One, he could have reduced the succussion and he could have increased, increased the dilution ratio. So th then he started experimenting with both these options to increase the dilution ratio and decrease the succussion. So when uh, in this process, this is how he reached the LM scale by decreasing the succussion and increasing the dilution ratio from 1 is to 1 is to 100, he made it to 1 is to 50,000. And the succussion also, uh, initially, although he was, he wrote about having 10 succussions uh, in, in that dilution, but later on, he reduced it to only two succussions. So this is how he developed LM potency. So the why, what was the purpose of the LM potency that he could repeat the medicine more often without any homeopathic aggravation, it could be given daily to more sensitive people, people who are idiosyncratic. So this was the rationale, this was the logic with which he developed these potencies. So this is how you have to actually use it. You can actually use LM potencies in all your uh, cases also. But LM potencies work just like any other scale. So it is a myth that LM potencies do not aggravate. If your medicine is right, not right. If you repeat blindly, if you repeat blindly, uh, because a lot of people think that LM potencies can be repeated every day blindly. Hanneman has said that you can repeat them, but Hanneman has also said that you cannot repeat them blindly. The basic rule of repetition remains that you have to repeat the potency or the medicine only as long as there is not significant amelioration. Once there is significant amelioration, if you continue to repeat, you are going to get medicinal aggravation. So this is not true that homeopathic medicines do not, uh, LM potencies will not produce aggravation. They produce aggravation if the medicine is not right, if you repeat unnecessarily or you repeat even after the patient has had significant amelioration. So if you are starting with LM1, now it is not necessary to start with LM1. You can start with LM1, LM2, LM3, wherever you are comfortable and whatever your scale is available. Uh, if that potency doesn't work and if you are sure of your remedy selection, then it is wise to either change the potency from LM2, you can go to LM3 or sometimes you can even change your scale. But it is not necessary that you go to CM because CM has very high succussion. It doesn't, it is, you cannot compare it with LM scale. But if I am if I am using uh, a potency like uh, LM1 or LM2, the comparable potency in centesimal scale will be 12, C12, not even C30. So if you have to use a centesimal, if you have to move to centesimal scale, you can move to centesimal scale if you are sure of your remedy selection. But the potency will not be CM. It will be somewhere lower, C C12, C18, C30. That should be the potency that you should try. Because you are using LM potencies primarily because the patient is sensitive. Or, or you want to repeat the medicines frequently to speed up the cure. That is the reason you are using LM potency. Okay? Is that, is that clear?
Yes, I see. All right. So let's take the next question. Who is next? Thank you, sir. Just a moment. Is there any? All right. So, any other questions? So, uh, while we receive more questions from you, I'll, I, I would like to ask uh, answer the question posted by Vamsi. And the question was that she got selected uh, for MD Pharmacy. Is that true, uh, Vamsi? And she was confused whether she should be pursuing it or not. So uh, now this is a question which has got a lot of personal choices. Whether you want to do first thing is do you want to do MD or not? What is the purpose of doing MD? Now MD is being done is done primarily in homeopathy for two reasons. Either you want to learn uh, something as a clinician. You want more clinical exposure. Or second thing you want to go into education. Now if you want to go into education then you can take MD in organ and repertory or pharmacy. The question is, do you want, when you are doing MD in pharmacy, there is very little you actually gain uh, in terms of practical clinical knowledge. Yeah, when you are doing MD in repertory uh, you, you, or MD in materia medica, even in MD in organ, you get a lot of clinical exposure. You get a lot of materia medica. You get a lot of repertory that you learn. So that adds to your clinical uh, acumen also, your clinical uh, knowledge also. But when you're doing MD in pharmacy, you will be primarily doing it just for the sake of becoming a lecturer in pharmacy. Lecturer in homeopathic pharmacy in, in a uh, college. You know, in a government, in, a, in any homeopathic college. So it is now for you to decide whether you want to become a lecturer of homeopathic pharmacy uh, in a homeopathic college. Apart from that, it doesn't have any scope. It doesn't add a lot to your to you as a clinician, and it doesn't offer you a lot of career choices also beyond that. So uh, you need to you need to answer that to yourself whether you want to do it or you do not want to do it. It's for entirely up to you to decide. But uh, if, I, it, if, if, if it were me, I would prefer to do it uh, in a more clinical subject. If it is possible for you to do it in a clinical subject, it's better. If you do not have clinical subject, then it's better to do in a subject like Materia Medica or repertory or Organon, which are more mainstream, which have more job opportunities. Uh, because what happens is uh, pharmacy is only a first year subject. So even the jobs are not so many. Materia Medica and Organa are taught in three, four years. So the number of uh, job option, options are much more. You need more teachers for Organa and Materia Medica in, 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 a, in any college. Compared to a, a teacher of pharmacy, you just need one teacher of pharmacy. So the number of job opportunities for somebody who is doing, doing MD in Organa or MD in repertory or MD in uh, Materia Medica, they will be far more. And uh, they, they add to your clinical skills also. And uh, you can do in MD in pediatrics also, MD in practice of medicine also. Uh, that's it. So I hope this answers your question, Vamsi. But at the end of the day, it's going to be your personal decision. What next? Who is next? Any other questions, my friends? Anything related to your career choice, anything related to organin, because that is what I teach. Your Any problems that you face in your uh, clinical uh, life, it can be related to remedy selection, case taking, managing different types of cases. Everything uh, is... Uh, is on board. You can ask questions about anything.
Okay, uh, Rohini has asked how to be a classical homeopath from where to start as I prescribe on my materia only. So, and Bhavnesh is asking how to improve case taking skills. So, Rohini, I'll ask you a question first. How to be a classical homeopath? You, you say that you rely on materia only. So, materia, relying on materia medica is not against being a classical homeopath. The classical homeopath is somebody who basically uh, follows the basic principles of homeopathy and what are the basics those seven cardinal principles of homeopathy that, that you studied in the first year what were those uh, those seven cardinal principles the law of similia the law of minimum that those those basic ideas that you give single remedy minimum dose one remedy at a time based on individuality and totality of symptoms now, even if you are using Materia Medica, you have to follow the same principles. But you cannot use Materia Medica in isolation. At the end of the day, you are making some clinical judgments based on your principles. You are, if you are using remedies based on Materia Medica, you are still using them on the basis of Similima. So being a classical homeopath doesn't mean you have to do something special. You just have to do the basic homeopathy and if you do basic homeopathy follow the basic fundamental principles of homeopathy you are a classical homeopath classical homeopath doesn't mean that you cannot uh, repeat the medicines you cannot change the medicines what classical homeopathy ask you to take the case properly analyze it repertorize it and give one medicine at a time and give it in the least possible dose. Least least possible dose doesn't mean that you use one put one dose at this, at uh, for the patient and just do not repeat the uh, medicine. That is not classical homeopathy. That one dose wait and watch posology was fourth edition. In fifth edition, the posology changed. You can dilute the potency centesimal scale and then you can repeat it every day. In 6th edition, we move to 50 millisimal scale. You can again repeat the potency every day. So classical homeopathy is very, very flexible. Materia Medica is just a tool. Organon is just a tool. Repertory is just a tool. You need all those tools to practice. But you have to practice on the basic principles. If you practice on, on vague ideas, on therapeutics, on fundas, then of course you have a problem. But if you are following the basic principles, that is what classical homeopathy is. Using Materia Medica is not against classical homeopathy. We all use Materia Medica. Nobody can prescribe on the basis of organin. You can make prescribing decisions on the basis of organin. But you cannot prescribe on the basis of organin. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Bhavnish is asking how to improve case taking skills. Uh, my answer to that would be observe seniors while they are taking cases. Even uh, you can go to different seminars where they show live video cases. The more cases you take, the more your case taking will be refined. But this is something that you need to learn also. You need to see others doing it because uh, I have also seen, I, I also still learn a lot how a particular case is approached by a different homeopath. There, there are cases where even we get stuck and then we see, okay, how is Dr. Sankran analyzing this case or how is Professor Vithulkas analyzing this case or how, is Dr. how would Dr. Nikam analyze this case or approach this case. We all have... Uh, our own individuality that comes out in the case taking. So case taking is a very, very personal, uh, there, there are general rules for case taking, but at the end of the day, it's a very personal uh, and individual approach also, how you approach to a case. So the more cases you take, the more your case taking will get refined. The more uh, you see others taking experienced homeopaths who take the case, or the more cases you take under supervision, the more your case taking will be refined. You have to realize that case taking is a very artistic uh, part of homeopathy. And you cannot learn case taking by following the performers that are given in the colleges. If you have to learn case taking, you have to actually take a lot of Hanumanian approach. Hanuman has given very beautifully how to take the case. So read Organon and then what Hanuman has written about case taking. 
and don't just read it. Try to imbibe it. Try to even read the footnotes given in the case taking of horizons, the 20 of horizons that uh, are there for case taking. And you will see that Hanneman's case taking was very, very in depth. Now, take that into your own practice and see how other senior homeopaths are doing it. How different school of uh, homeopathy uh, approach different cases. And there is always to something to learn from everyone. So that is how you improve your case taking. Take as many cases as possible. Learn from everyone. All right. Wamsi is saying how to approach an acute case in pediatrics. And Rohini is asking what would be the plan to follow from scratch. Follow whom? Follow up. Rohini, can you, can you please uh, rephrase your question more clearly? What would be the plan to follow from scratch? Follow what? Follow whom? Is it follow up? Till that time, let me ask, answer this question about Wamsi again. From Wamsi again. How do you approach an acute case in pediatrics? All right. So uh, when you are saying pediatrics cases, so I'll, I'll tell you, I'm MD pediatrics. I have done my MD in pediatrics. So I, I think I can answer this question, although I'm a teacher of organin. I've been teaching organin since last 20 years, uh, but I did my MD in pediatrics. So uh, how do we approach pediatric cases, especially acute cases? The biggest uh, part of pediatric case taking is observation. Observation when the patient is in your clinic, how the patient is behaving. That is primarily what decides pediatric case taking. Is the patient clinging to the mother? Is the patient clinging to the father? Is the patient comfortable getting down from the lap of the mother? Uh, is the patient uh, looking at you or not looking at you? When, the, when you are talking to the patient, is the patient uh, looking towards you or does this or looks at mother and then answers or doesn't answer at all. We have rubrics for all of these. We have rubrics for all this behavior. So you have to learn to convert this observation into uh, rubrics, whether the patient allows you to touch or not. Uh, the, these are all uh, observations, how the patient is friendly or not. Is the patient talking to you or not talking to you? Is the patient talking relevant or not? Is the patient... Uh, even if it's a child, a three-year child, they can talk a lot. Uh, only if it's an infant less than one year old, then it's you primarily rely on your observation uh, or the parent's observation. That is the second part. But uh, for majority of time, if the child is above two years old, then they can communicate. Then you have to see how they are communicating. They are looking at you or not looking at you. They are avoiding the eye contact or have making an eye contact. They are talking to you or not talking to you. They are clinging to their parents or hiding behind the parents. If, uh, are they cranky? Are they very afraid of coming into your chamber? If uh, How easily they get distracted? They are, are they attracted towards something? If you offer them any candies or any toy, how do they react? All these things uh, help us decide uh, the primary nature of the child. And then we come to the mothers or the fathers or the parents uh, observations and the way they tell the complaint in acute cases uh, two things are important one what are the acute symptoms what what are what is the acute totality about the disease totality you do not prescribe just on the basis of okay this patient is very irritable so i give him sinna that is not how you prescribe sinna will only work in an irritable child if Sina covers the symptoms of that particular child. Otherwise, Sina will not work. So don't prescribe just on the basis of irritability. What you need to do is first figure out what is the disease? What are the symptoms that the patient has? If the patient has, uh, say, diarrhea, then is your remedy, then first figure out what remedies cover that diarrhea. Is it watery diarrhea? Is the diarrhea mucoid? Is the diarrhea white curdled? Is the diarrhea greenish? How frequent the diarrhea is? Is it offensive? It is sour? Uh, is it purulent? What kind of diarrhea is it? What caused that diarrhea? First take all that and then if then look at the mentals of the child. What has changed? Also remember, do not prescribe on the constitution of the child that this child is very friendly in general. 
No, what has changed during the disease process, the change in the disposition is important. If it's a chronic case or an acute case, always look for the change in disposition. A child who is irritable in general, but becomes mild during that diarrhea will not need sina. He'll probably need calcarea carb or pulsatilla. It is the change in the disposition that is part of the disease. And a child who is very mild and timid in general, and then he becomes very irritable and cross, that child might need antitart or sina or scamomilla or something like that. So don't ask ki in general ki bacha kaisa hai, bachche ka nature kaisa hai, wo bhi poochna hai. Lekin phir ye bhi poochna hai uh, humko parents se ki jab se bukhar hua hai bachche ko, ya jab se isko pet mein dard hai, ya jab se isko diarrhea ho rakha hai, तब से इसके नेचर में कोई चेंज दिख रहा है क्या आपको क्या ये अभी भी बहुत ज्यादा रेस्टलेस है या अभी ये डल है अभी ये इरिटेबल हो गया है क्या चेंज महसूस हो रहा है आपको इसके नेचर में सो so, वो चेंज है वो इंपॉर्टेंट है सो ऑलवेज लुक फॉर दैट चेंज सो दिस इज दिस इज हाउ यू अप्रोच पीडियाट्रिक केसेस फर्स्ट थिंग इज डॉक्टर्स ओन ऑब्जर्वेशन वेरी वेरी क्रूशियल वेरी क्रूशियल What खांसी हो रही है बच्चे को वॉट इज दाइल्ड डूइंग वेन ही इज कॉफिंग इज द चाइल्ड डूइंग लाइक दिस और इज द चाइल्ड होल्डिंग द टमी और इज द चाइल्ड जस्ट क्लिंगिंग टू मॉम वेन ही इज कॉफ और इज द चाइल्ड कमिंग टू यू की आई हैफ चल मेरे को कांची हो रही है different remedies, different remedies. So uh, this is how you approach pediatric cases and again. Clinical examination is also important. Being a pediatrician, I can tell you that clinical examination is also important. Three months old baby comes to us. He will say that he is coughing and he is not coughing. 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 उसका हम अगर पेट में कोई हमको लग रहा है बच्चा रो रहा है तो हम उसका ईयर चेक करेंगे हम उसका पेट चेक करेंगे पेलपेट करके देखेंगे उसको हम पटकस करके देखेंगे उसका पैर मोड़ के देखेंगे कि उसको किसी तरह से तकलीफ बढ़ रही है उसको आराम आ रहा है क्योंकि बहुत सारी छोटी छोटी चीजें होती हैं जो पेरेंट्स भी कई बार नहीं ऑब्जर्व करते सो so, उसमें क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन का भी रोल है एंड दिस वॉज ऑल्सो रिटर्न इन ऑर्गन ऑल्सो ऑल्सो not specifically for pediatric cases but in general also uh, haneman has written in organin that at the end of the case when you have done all the case taking the patient is spontaneously told everything you have recorded your own observations the attendant has have told everything that they need to tell and you still feel that you need to know more specific details about things then you can actually ask the patient ki ab chal ke dikhao kuch hota hai kya farak लेफ्ट करवट लेट हो राइट करवट लेट हो सीधे लेट हो उठो बैठो टर्न अराउंड सी जस्ट टू सी इफ सिम्टम्स चेंज और इफ इफ दो एक्शन आर रिलेटेड टू एनी मोडालिटीज सो दिस इज वॉट इज रिटर्न इन ऑर्गन एंड दैट इज वॉट वी डू विद पीडियाट्रिक केसेस सो अगेन वेरी लॉन्ग टॉपिक बट दिस इज हाउ यू बिगिन ऑल राइट वाम सी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन हाउ टू कन्वर्ट पेशेंट सिम्टम्स इन टू रूब्रेक सुनीता Sunita is asking how to convert patient symptoms into rubrics. Okay, Sunita, what we do is uh, first thing is that you need to identify what is common in that case and what is uncommon in that case. First, you need to learn to filter that. And how do you filter that? To understand what is uncommon in a case, you first need to understand what is common in a case. And to understand what is common in a case, you need to have very good knowledge of disease. very good knowledge of disease for example if you are if if a patient if somebody says ki mere ko left side letne pe mere ko palpitation hota hai theek hai abhi is it a pqrs is it a pqrs or is it a common symptom of mitral regurgitation or aortic regurgitation so you will be able to identify only only if you know 
the symptoms of aortic regurgitation and mitral regurgitation so if it's a case of uh, valvular disease and then usko left side latne pe palpitation hota hai thodi der then it becomes a common symptom then it's of no not much use it's of use but not much use in prescribing so first thing similarly agar koi patient aake kehta hai main kab pakadta hu aise to mera haath aise 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 se kaapta hai ab wo kaapta hai haath to is it a case of parkinson's disease or is it uh benign essential tremor or is it something pqrs again that that you will only be able to decide if you understand the disease process also if you understand the pathology also if you understand the practice of medicine part well so pehli cheez to before you convert uh symptoms into rubrics the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out which symptoms to convert into rubrics and those symptoms are the uncommon symptoms the peculiar the pqrs peculiar queer rare symptoms is strange symptoms uh, you have to figure out what is it that is standing out in this case what is it that that is individualizing in this particular case so once you have that data then uh, you need to learn repertory you can only repertory is like a language repertory try to understand repertory ek bhasha ki tarah hai जैसे आपको मान लीजिए हिंदी भाषा आती है और अंग्रेजी भाषा आती है या मराठी भाषा आती है तो आपको आपको हिंदी आती है अब आपको उसको मराठी में या मारवाड़ी में या किसी भी और गुजराती लैंग्वेज में आपको ट्रांसलेट करना है आप उसको ट्रांसलेट का आप कर पाओगे आपको हिंदी में आपको कोई चीज है और उसको गुजराती में ट्रांसलेट तभी कर पाओगे ना जब आपको गुजराती आती है अगर गुजराती नहीं आती तो आप उसको गुजराती में ट्रांसलेट नहीं कर सकते सिमिलरली अगर आपको रिपोर्ट्री की लैंग्वेज नहीं आती तो आप सिम्टम्स को रूब्रिक्स में कन्वर्ट नहीं कर सकते तो रिपोर्ट्री कैसे आएगी आपको रिपोर्ट्री आपको सीखनी पड़ती है कि रिपोर्ट्री का स्ट्रक्चर क्या है रिपोर्ट्री में चैप्टर्स क्या है रिपोर्ट्री में रूब्रिक्स किस तरह से लिखे जाते हैं अलग अलग रिपोर्ट्री में अलग अलग तरीके से लिखे जाते हैं रिपोर्ट्री में किस तरह से उसको कन्वर्ट मान लीजिए अगर कोई पेशेंट है <coughs> जो कह रहा है कि मेरे को आपको मान लीजिए सिंपल थर्स्ट ही लेनी है या डिजायर्स अवर्जेंस लेने हैं तो कौन सी रिपोर्ट्री में किस चैप्टर में मिलेंगे हर रिपोर्ट्री में जनरलिटीज में नहीं मिलेंगे कंप्लीट में अगर जनरलिटीज में मिल जाएंगे तो जरूरी नहीं है सिंथेसिस में आपको भी जनरलिटीज में ही मिले तो आपको हर रिपोर्ट्री या जो कॉमन रिपोर्ट्री आप यूज कर रहे हो उसका आपको समझ होनी चाहिए कि उस रिपोर्ट्री का स्ट्रक्चर क्या है उस रिपोर्ट्री में सिम्टम्स किस तरह से दिए हुए हैं किस ग्रे, कितनी ग्रेडिंग के सिम्टम्स हैं कितनी लेवल के सिम्टम्स हैं लेवल वन लेवल टू लेवल थ्री लेवल फोर अलग अलग रिपोर्ट्रीज में अलग अलग लेवल के होते हैं और फिर आपको उसको पढ़ना आना चाहिए कि उस रूब्रिक को पढ़ना कैसे है कि अगर लिखा हुआ है फीवर कॉमा हीट कॉमा चिल ड्यूरिंग तो इसको पढ़ेंगे कैसे तो इसको पढ़ेंगे ऐसे नहीं फीवर कॉमा हीट कॉमा चिल ड्यूरिंग नहीं इसको पढ़ने का तरीका होता है हीट चिल ड्यूरिंग सो दिस इज हाउ यू रीड तो लैंग्वेज है वो अपने आप में रिपोर्ट्री एक तरह की भाषा है उसका अपना एक सिंटेक्स है तो जैसे हर किसी भी भाषा का सिंटेक्स होता है रिपोर्ट्री की भाषा का भी सिंटेक्स है रिपोर्ट्री की लैंग्वेज का भी सिंटेक्स है और वो सिंटेक्स जब तक आपको नहीं पता होगा आप सिम्टम्स को रिपोर्ट्री में नहीं कन्वर्ट कर पाओगे सो so, पहला काम वो सिम्टम्स ढूंढो जिनको रिपोर्ट्री लैंग्वेज में कन्वर्ट करना है और दूसरी काम रिपोर्ट्री की लैंग्वेज से खुद को अक्वेंट करो रूब्रिक्स पढ़ने की आदत डालो एट द स्टूडेंट लेवल यू नीड टू डू हमारे टाइम में आसान होता था क्योंकि सॉफ्टवेयर नहीं होते थे तो अगर मेरे को मान लो अगर कोई कैंट की रिपोर्ट्री में मेरे को कोई रूब्रिक ढूंढना है ना तो मैं उसके आगे पीछे के तीन चार पन्ने पढ़ने पड़ते थे हमको तो हमको बहुत सारे रूब्रिक्स की ऐसी समझ हो जाती थी आजकल क्या है रिपोर्ट्री आपने कंप्यूटर खोला सर्च किया तो आप आगे पीछे के रूब्रिक्स दिखते ही नहीं हो इसलिए जब आप स्टूडेंट ईयर्स में हो या अर्ली प्रैक्टिस में हो तो आपको थोड़ा सा रूब्रिक्स पढ़ने आने चाहिए थोड़ा सा टाइम डिवोट करना चाहिए कि यार आज अपन कुछ दिन अभी से एक पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर को पढ़ के देखते हैं कि इसमें किस क्या क्या रूब्रिक्स दिए हुए हैं क्या उसका स्ट्रक्चर है किस तरह के सिम्टम्स को किस तरह के रूब्रिक्स में कन्वर्ट किया हुआ है तो बहुत छोटी छोटी चीजें होती हैं जैसे अपने यहाँ अल्कोहलिज्म नहीं मिलेगा पुरानी रिपोर्ट्रीज में आपको डिप्सोमेनिया मिलेगा अभी भाषा है ना रिपोर्ट्री की पुरानी भाषा है जो चल रही है वो नहीं आपको पता है तो नहीं पता है ढूंढते रहो आप सॉफ्टवेयर से ढूंढोगे तो क्रॉस रेफरेंस मिल जाएगा लेकिन किताब से ढूंढोगे तो अक्सर क्रॉस रेफरेंस भी नहीं मिलेगा 
सो जस्ट मास्टर उसको एक अप्रोच रिपोर्ट्री एज अ डिफरेंट लैंग्वेज only if you know that language you will be able to convert patient's language into repertory language all right what's next sir please tell something about case taking during follow up okay now what is handman written about case taking during follow up जब हम केस टेकिंग करते हैं तब हम क्या करते हैं हैनीमन ने लिखा कि आप सारे सिम्टम्स नोट करो सर से लेकर पैर तक हर सिम्टम को कंप्लीट करो अब हैनीमन खुद लिख के गए हैं कि फॉलो अप कैसे लेना है हैनीमन लिख के गए हैं जब पेशेंट आता है आपके पास फॉलो अप के लिए तो यू गो ओपन योर ओरिजिनल केस शीट पेशेंट से एक बार आपने जनरल पूछा कि भाई क्या क्या हाल है आपके पेशेंट ने जो भी आपको जनरल अपडेट दिया उसको नोट किया After that, Hanneman says that go through each and every symptom that you recorded during the first consultation. Patient ne agar aapko kaha tha pichle consultation mein ki mere sir mein dard hai. Aapne pucha tha sir dard kahan hota hai? Usne kaha mere vertex pe hota hai. Kab hota hai sir mein? Jab so ke uttaa hoon, mujhe sir mein dard hota hai. Hafte mein kitne din hota hai? Ya mahine mein kitne din hota hai? Sir mein ko har dusre din sir mein dard hota hai. Suppose this is what patient said. Now. when the patient is coming to follow up and this is just one symptom this is just one symptom when the patient is coming for follow up what do you do now what you do is you actually ask this patient ki wo jo aapko sar mein dard hota tha wo kaisa hai patient kahega aksar patient ye bhi kehta hai doctor sahab usme koi khas farak nahi hai waisa hi hai so then you ask ki kitni baar hota hai abhi aapko ya jab se aap dawai leke gaye kitni baar hua डॉक्टर साहब ज्यादा बार तो नहीं हुआ कोई तीन चार बार हुआ होगा पिछले महीने में सो नाउ यू नो दैट द पेशेंट को पहले उसने लिखाया था हफ्ते में दो हर दूसरे दिन होता है अभी कह रहा है महीने में तीन चार बार हुआ है डेफिनेटली द इंटेंसिटी इज गॉन डाउन द फ्रीक्वेंसी इज गॉन डाउन सो दैट इज हाउ हैनेमन से गो थ्रू ईच सिम्टम कि अभी भी अभी ये तकलीफ कैसी है उसके बाद ये तकलीफ कैसी है ये तकलीफ कैसी है टू मेक श्योर दैट you are able to understand everything that has changed in the course of treatment and then you ask patient anything else iske alawa aapne kuch aur observe kiya hai kya and this is how you complete your case and the case taking has to be very very thorough during follow up also only then you will decide you will be able to decide ki aapki dawai sahi thi ya nahi thi ab ab abhi humko next kya karna hai अभी हमको वही दवाई रिपीट करनी है उसी पोटेंसी में करनी है उसका रिपीटेशन बढ़ाना है उसकी पोटेंसी बढ़ानी है या उसकी पोटेंसी घटानी है क्या करना है या हमको एंटीडोट करना है या दवाई चेंज करनी है वो सारा डिसीजन इस बात पे डिसाइड होगा कि आपने फॉलो अप में कैसे असेस किया पेशेंट को सिर्फ पेशेंट के ये कहने से कि मैं ठीक हूं या पेशेंट के ये कहने से कि मुझे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ा दैट डजेंट डिसाइड योर रेमेडी यू हैव टू बी वेरी वेरी थारो विद विद योर केस टेकिंग with with the follow up case taking also okay uh sub has said sir despite personal choice md in which subject is much for a doctor related to consulting a patient mm or pm of course uh any subject is good you can do practice of medicine or materia medica Uh, ultimately it's your personal choice in somebody who wants to be a teacher of organ and he can do md in organ and somebody who wants to be a teacher in repertory he can uh, do md in repertory dekhiye ultimately uh, although it's a core subject even if you are doing pharmacy you will still need to do clinical research during your md aisa nahi ki aapko cases nahi dekhne honge aapko cases bhi dekhne honge aapko cases submit bhi karne hote hain around 100 cases submit karne hote hain md ke dauran apart from your रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट दैट यू आर डूइंग उसके लिए अलग से आपको केसेस करने होते हैं तो देर इज लॉट टू बी लर्न ड्यूरिंग एम डी वट एवर सब्जेक्ट यू चूज बट अफकोर्स देर इज अ डिफरेंस इन जो एम डी फार्मेसी कर रहा है उसको मटेरा मेडिका के दो पेपर्स नहीं देने होते जो एम डी मटेरा मेडिका कर रहा है उसको मटेरा मेडिका के दो पेपर्स देने होते हैं जो एम डी रिपोर्ट्री कर रहा होता है उसको रिपोर्ट्री के दो पेपर्स देने होते हैं जो एम डी पेडियाट्रिक्स कर रहा होता है उसको पेडियाट्रिक्स के दो पेपर्स देने होते हैं 
सो so, वो थोड़ा सा आपका वो क्लिनिकल स्किल या उस सब्जेक्ट स्किल का फर्क आ जाता है बट बेसिकल बेसिक क्लिनिकल ट्रेनिंग इज मैंडेटरी फॉर ऑल एम डीज सो एंड एट द एंड ऑफ द डे वॉट वॉट यू मेक आउट ऑफ यूर स्टडीज एंड हाउ मच एफर्ट यू पुट इन दैट इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सिर्फ करिकुलम से कुछ नहीं होता करिकुलम तो बी एच एम एस का सबके लिए सेम होता है ना बट नॉट एवरी होम्योपैथ एवरी स्टूडेंट कम्स आउट ऑफ होम्योपैथी कॉलेज इज सेम some some turn out to be very good homeopathic doctors and uh, many others or rather most others end up doing night duties in allopathic hospitals so it's it's a matter of personal choice okay uh, ak9423 ask management of acute problem when patient is taking medicine from you for the chronic problem okay again very very clearly written in uh, when patient is taking medicine from you for the chronic problem so what the question is that i have got a patient who is taking chronic uh, treatment for a chronic disease say migraine and now he comes down with an acute fever ho gaya diarrhea ho gaya pet mein dard ho gaya zukam ho gaya kuch bhi ho gaya in acute and this is the question now how do you manage that acute problem uh, what is written in organ is that you do not mix acute and chronic symptoms pehli cheez an acute totality should be taken in isolation acute or chronic symptoms ko mix nahi karna hota aapko acute ko acute ki tarah se treat karna hota hai lekin acute ko kab treat karna hai ye dhyan rakhna hai for example अगर मेरे पास कई बार क्या होता है जब हम क्रॉनिक डिजीजेस को ट्रीट करते हैं तो सम अक्यूट्स कम अप एज एलिमिनेटिव रिएक्शन और एज रिटर्न ऑफ ओल्ड सिम्टम्स तो अगेन वो आपको बहुत आपको क्लिनिकल स्किल्स अच्छी होनी चाहिए आपको थोड़ा सा एक्सपीरियंस होना चाहिए उस चीज को समझने के लिए कि आज मैं इस पेशेंट को मैंने दवाई दी मान लो स्किन इराप्शन के लिए मैंने कोई दवाई दी और उसको दो दिन बाद डायरिया हो गया तो अब मैं उस डायरिया को हाथ लगाऊं या नहीं लगाऊ मेरी पर्सनल प्रेफरेंस होगी नहीं लगाओ अगर क्रॉनिक ट्रीटमेंट शुरू करते ही कोई अक्यूट आता है यूजुअली गुड एलिमिनेटिव रिएक्शन ऑफ द बॉडी सो वहां हम नहीं हाथ लगाएंगे लेकिन ठीक है कोई पेशेंट आपसे तीन महीने से दवा खा रहा है माइग्रेन की या एक्जिमा की एंड ड्यूरिंग दैट कोर्स विद नोन प्रेसिपिटेटिंग कॉज उसको कुछ खांसी जुकाम बुखार उल्टी दस्त पेट में दर्द कुछ भी हो जाता है देन डोंट मिक्स दो अक्यूट सिम्टम्स विद द क्रॉनिक सिम्टम उस वक्त पेशेंट से पूछो जैसे इस वक्त पेशेंट को डायरिया हो रखा है तो उस वक्त पेशेंट से पूछो अभी तुम्हारा खाने पीने का क्या मन कर रहा है उसको खाने पीने में अच्छा क्या लगता है वो नहीं पूछो वो क्रॉनिक सिम्टम है वो क्रॉनिक टोटेलिटी का पार्ट है अभी उसको जब अक्यूट है उस वक्त पूछो अभी खाने का क्या मन कर रहा है पिछले जब से तुम्हारे को बुखार हुआ क्या चीज तुमने माँ बच्चा है तो माँ से पूछो जब से इसको बुखार हुआ तब से इसने क्या खाने की डिमांड करी उससे ये मत पूछो कि तुमको प्यास लगती है या नहीं लगती या कितना पानी पीते हो दिन में उसको ये पूछो कि जब से तबीयत खराब हुई तब से प्यास कैसी है सो टेक दैट अक्यूट टोटेलिटी उसका पेशेंट का टेम्परामेंट है वो मत पूछो पेशेंट का या वो मत कर, मिक्स करो पुराने वाला टेम्परामेंट अभी नए वाले से अभी जब से बुखार हुआ है तब से उसके टेम्परामेंट में क्या चेंज आया है एक्टिव है रेस्टलेस है डल है इरिटेबल है मोरोस है वीपिंग है क्लिंगिंग है क्या है अभी उसके बेस पे दवा प्रिस्क्राइब करो ओके ओके लंबा खींच गया है अभी विल टेक जस्ट फॉर अन टेन फिफ्टीन मिनट्स ओके रोहिणी यू से दैट यू Use Allen's keynotes flash and just prescribe. So that's okay. Allen's keynotes ke base pe prescribe karna koi galat nahi hai. Uh, it's good material medica, uh, good enough material medica. But at the end of the day, principles to fir bhi follow karne padenge na. Ap patients ke symptoms pres leke totality to loge hi na. At the end of the day, you will prescribe on the basis of totality. Uh, at the end of the day, ap Allen's keynotes use karke bhi you 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 can prescribe one medicine. You can prescribe the right posology. That is what classical homeopathy is. to be from from shifting from a therapeutic prescriber to a proper classical homeopath the first thing you need to do is you need to learn thorough case taking 
you prescribe therapeutically only if you do not do case taking properly ki sir mere agar patient ne kaha sir mere piles ho rahe hain aur aapke dimag mein seedhe aloes ya esculus jaisi dawaiyan aa rahi hain to phir aap therapeutics hi kar rahe ho aloes esculus bhi kaam karengi agar symptoms match kar rahe hain agar aap symptoms match karke aloes ya esculus de rahe ho piles ke case mein to wo therapeutic prescribing nahi hai wo proper classical homeopathy hai लेकिन अगर आप ब्लाइंडली अगर आप प्रेस्क्राइब कर रहे हो कोई भी दवाई फंडे के बेस पे दे रहे हो या एक से ज्यादा दवाइयां दे रहे हो तो वो थेरेप्यूटिक प्रेस्क्राइबिंग है उसके लिए द ओनली वे टू कम आउट ऑफ दैट इज दैट यू लर्न हाउ टू टेक केस प्रॉपरली यू यू शेड योर प्रेजुडिस अबाउट द रेमिडीज दैट आर देयर इन योर हेड इट्स नॉट ईजी बट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे यू हैव टू प्रेस्क्राइब ओनली यू कैन प्रेस्क्राइब क्लासिकली ओनली इफ यू टेक द केस प्रॉपरली रोहिणी जी रोहिणी आस्क माई एक्सपीरियंस इन ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ बीपीएच केसेस ओके इट्स अ क्लिनिकल क्वेश्चन बीपीएच दर इज बिनाइन प्रोस्टेटिक हाइपरट्रॉफी इट्स इट्स यूजली वेरी इजी टू ट्रीट बीपीएच जस्ट लाइक एनी अदर डिसऑर्डर बीपीएच रिस्पॉन्स वेरी वेल टू होम्योपैथी usually but clinically you need to understand that whenever you are treating a case of bph you make sure that you get the psa done because uh, this there are in the early stages there is no difference in the signs and symptoms of bph and prostate cancer and prostate cancer is the most common cancer in males prostate cancer is the most common cancer in males so make sure that you always get your psa done if the psa is rising very quickly or if the pca psa is greater than 10 then make sure that you evaluate the case properly for prostate cancer also so that is the first clinical guidance that i can give you second thing is uh, at the end of the day you have to prescribe on the basis of totality agar aapko lagta hai aap bph ke cases mein blindly baraita carb ya conium deke aapko aaram aa jayega majority of cases mein nahi aayega aapke paas therapeutics ki kitabon mein bph ki 25 dawaiyan ya 40 dawaiyan di hui hain un 25 mein se 40 mein se ho sakta hai koi dawai kaam kare lekin wahi dawai kaam karegi jo us particular patient ke सिम्टम्स कवर कर रही है अगेन देखो बीपीएच के सिम्टम्स कॉमन होंगे आपको फ्रीक्वेंट यूरिनेशन एट नाइट होगा इनकम्प्लीट यूरिनेशन होगा समटाइम्स इन इफेक्चुअल अर्जिंग फॉर यूरिनेशन होगी सो इफ यू जस्ट प्रिस्क्राइब ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट अगेन यू विल नॉट रीच टू द डिजायर गोल वो ड्रामेटिक रिजल्ट नहीं मिलेंगे आप बहुत सारा मदर टिंचर उसको देते रहोगे पेशेंट को देखिए कुछ केसेस में थेरेप्यूटिक अप्रोच काम कर जाती है क्यों क्योंकि वो सिम्टम्स कहीं ना कहीं मैच कर जाते हैं पार्शली या कई बार आप अल्टपे में जो दवाई दे रहे हो वो सिमिलिमम निकल जाती है वेरी क्लोज सिमिलिमम निकल जाती है बट आपको अगर श्योरिटी के साथ दवाई देनी है श्योरिटी के साथ दवाई देनी है तो देन यू नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट आप उसके ना इंडिविजुअलाइज करो पेशेंट को क्योंकि इंडिविजुअलिटी तो हर पेशेंट की होती है कुछ कॉमन सिम्टम्स होंगे लेकिन नॉट एवरी पेशेंट गेट्स बीपीएच ना नॉट एवरी मेल गेट्स बीपीएच अच्छा हर केस में बीपीएच के सिम्टम्स नहीं आते मैंने ऐसे बहुत सारे केसेस देखे हैं जिनमें प्रोस्टेट का वेट सिर्फ 28 ग्राम 24 ग्राम होता है एंड दे गेट सिवियर सिम्टम्स एंड मैंने ऐसे केसेस भी देखे हैं जिन पे प्रोस्टेट का वेट 100 ग्राम सवा सौ ग्राम द हाइएस्ट आई है इवन ये सच हाई सच बिग प्रोस्टेट बट नॉट सिग्निफिकेंट सिम्टम्स क्योंकि प्रोस्टेट का सिम्टम आएगा या नहीं आएगा वो डिपेंड करता है कि प्रोस्टेट जो है मीडियली ग्रो कर रहा है कंप्रेसिंग द यूरेथ्रा और इट्स ग्रोइंग टुवर्ड्स द आउटसाइड कैप्सूल की तरफ ग्रो कर रहा है तो बहुत सारी चीजें इंडिविजुअलाइजिंग फैक्टर्स होते हैं मोडालिटीज होती हैं वो सब कंसिडर करके अपन ट्रीट करते हैं तो यूजुअली बीपीएच हैज गॉट बीपीएच हैज गॉट गुड प्रोग्नोसिस विद होम्योपैथी आई होप दिस हेल्प जी रोहिणी okay what else anything else i have i missed any question in the comments while asking if if i missed any question please post it again
All right, I think we have. This is all the time we have for today. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Uh, do post me your feedback. I'm just looking if I've missed for any questions in the comment section. How to deal with asthma cases, Bhavnesh? Bhavnesh, again, uh, now there are two things. When you are treating asthma cases, you have to remember that there is one chronic totality uh, of an asthma case and then there are acute exacerbations of the chronic case. In terms of homeopathy, in uh, chronic cases, there is something called acute case and there is something called acute exacerbation of a chronic case. So in asthma, you get a lot of acute exacerbation of a chronic case. Now, what are the guidelines for treating acute exacerbation of chronic case? The guideline is that you treat any acute exacerbation of a chronic case just like an acute case. All right, Narayan Prasad says, uh, there's no voice. Can somebody confirm if you can hear me? Hello, anyone, can you confirm if you can hear me? Please type in the chat box. Hello. All good. Okay. Jitesh, thank you. So, just a moment. So, what was the question? The question was related to asthma. So, in asthma, just like any chronic case, take the chronic case, uh, prescribe whatever remedy is coming based on the totality of the symptom, past medical history. Uh, now, asthma has two different types of asthma you will see. One that runs in the family and one that is acquired. Acquired after suppression of uh, frequent cold, after suppression of uh, uh, skin infections or skin diseases. Now, what I have, my personal experience is that the cases that are acquired primarily by suppression of skin diseases or by suppression of recurring cough and cold, the, those cases which end up being asthmatic, they, they need, usually they need different set of medicines in the cases that run in the families. Uh, parents, grandparents also have asthma, they need more, uh, they often need nosodes also, not always, but nosodes like medorinum, tuberculinum, they often prove very, bacillinum, that they often prove very useful in cases where the asthma runs in the family. Uh, ultimately, it depends upon the totality of the case and the symptoms. No blind use of nosodes also. And uh, then we come to acute ex exacerbation of the asthma cases. Now, the cases that you are treating asthma now, abhi aap asthma ke kisi patient ka ilaj kar rahe ho, aur usko suddenly koi uska dust ka exposure ho gaya, koi weather change ho gaya, koi pollen ka exposure ho gaya, koi aur allergen ka exposure ho gaya, and the patient comes down with a severe acute asthmatic attack. Treat that severe acute asthmatic attack as an isolated acute. Don't mix the chronic symptoms with that acute. Uswakat dekho patient ko kya ho raha hai? Wheezing ho rahi hai. Uswakat patient ko kis particular position mein takleef bar rahi hai? Kis particular position mein aram aari hai? Kis time modality kya hai? Kuch kya khane bhi nese usko aram aara hai ya bar rahi hai? Take it as an acute case. The acute exacerbation of asthma needs to be treated as an acute case. And once that acute exacerbation settles down, then you move on to your chronic case again, chronic remedy again. Okay. Uh, somebody said, okay, I'll be taking this as the last question. Homeopathy doc, I'll take your question. But before that, uh, somebody asked about recurring cons. So the cons, recurring cons don't treat the cons treat the person who is getting the cons, find the constitutional remedy, find the remedy that covers the whole history of the case and only then prescribe. Okay, I think we are just running out of only 10 seconds remaining, so I won't be able to take any more questions. Thank you all for joining. Uh, it has been a pleasure. To